Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Championships talking to team number 971 Spartan Robotics. You gotta take a look at this incredible machine, dual intake, the incredible turrets that you've known and loved from 971 for so long, some great software and an awesome climber. And now let me speak more about this incredible robot. By the way, I have Amanda, Hi. Laura, Millen, and Het. And we'll do, be doing that full cargo journey through, but there's so many like little nuggets and tidbits about this robot that we have to break down here. We can't wait to speak more about it coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. First Updates Now is supported by the Milwaukee School of Engineering. MSOE offers week-long summer camps where high school students get to preview college by living on campus, exploring engineering programs, experimenting in labs, meeting with professors, and participating in fun group activities. Are you ready to experience STEM at MSOE? Visit msoe.edu slash summer to learn more and register. First Updates Now is supported by Stryker Careers. Apply the skills you gained as a first student or mentor and help change the world at Stryker. Stryker is the top career choice for many of those in first because of their commitment to innovation and saving lives. Learn more about the incredible culture at Stryker and view their thousands of positions available around the world at careers.stryker.com. So Amanda, let's start out with your uh, intake on here. Love to hear about not just what it is, but like what testing did you do to get where you are? Uh, any modifications throughout the season, that sort of thing too. Yeah, so we did a lot actually with our intake prototyping. We did a lot of different wheels. We tried like flex wheels. We tried just regular like, Colson wheels. We ended up with these mechanism wheels with the Omni wheel in the middle. So we were able to filter our balls to come right into the center so that they could go right up into our robot. And you can see we have two intakes, one on the front, one on the back. One of them marked yellow for the front of the robot and the other blue for the back of the robot. So why was the dual intake set up when you were looking at from uh, strategizing and getting your robot together? Why was that a good priority for 971? Yeah, as we don't have a swerve drive, it's a little bit harder for us to like spin really quick. So having the double intake along with our turret that spins allows us to get balls faster that we're able to go from the front and from the back. So let's talk about uh, the, uh, I, I wanna hear more about the flippy arms as we call it, Lauren, and we'll talk about the transfer area as well too. Tell me more about that. Yeah, so we have a good ball pathing. So as we come in from the intake, it's nice and centered. We wanna get it from there to the catapult. So for this, we have our transfer roller system where we can actually hold our second ball. So our second ball is held in our transfer rollers and then we can spin the turret and get to it when needed. So once the ball goes through our transfer rollers, it hits these. These are our flipper arms. It's three degrees of freedom, all controlled with one motor. And this is done through a one-way bearing and a torsion spring. So how it works is it has complete control over the ball. This was something really important to us when designing because we knew we were gonna get hit by heavy defense. So what it does is it releases just as the catapult is about to fire. Sure. So these spin outwards. I am holding them. So, just like that on both sides and then we're able to fire. So that's yep. all done with software, and like, so we are timing this correctly. Next up, let's talk about your turret, and we're gonna lead that into the Catapult. 971 has been building phenomenal turrets. I think it's something your team's been known for for a really long time. So talk to me about uh, the composition a bit, and then this amazing Catapult you have too. Yeah, so because of our double intake, we have this turret along with this cable carrier that organizes all of our cable, which then actually comes up through the middle so that we're able to get to our cameras and our catapult and our climber. So we actually have basically everything mounted onto our turret just because of like lack of space on our robot. Sure. So that when our catapult is going, we don't have to worry about hitting our climbers or hitting anything else. So we are able to, our robot like through software has its awareness of like where it is so that when the turret spins around, we actually bring our intakes out a little bit so that we have the extra space. So our turret has a massive um, lathe part down here that's like holding everything structurally together and two bearings with a shaft in the, down the middle. You can't see it from here. Uh, it's kind of all under this. Yeah. That's making everything stable so that when, if we take hard hits, nothing gets like whacked out of place. So going into the catapult then, which is where the ball goes next, is we have this really cool carbon fiber arm that you can see we have another one of right, right here. It's super light and it's also super strong. The ball fits really snugly into it. What From a manufacturing process, what, did, like, what went into manufacturing that actually? Yeah, so we had like a 3D printed mold that we then layered the carbon fiber into and then with epoxy and then like a vacuum bag, we were able to make this. 
Let's talk uh, uh, a little bit about software as well too as we start to go in and talking about uh, every this whole package of the uh, cargo uh, all the way through. So uh, Miller, you're going to talk a little bit more about that and then we're going to go into your PCB as well too with that. Yeah, so to start off the software, when the ball gets intaked here, we can hold the ball in the transfer rollers as Laura mentioned because we have a beam brake right over here. So when the ball is detected by the beam brake, we can spin the transfer rollers back like this, and then it rolls a little back, and then we can spin them forward again once it's gone away from the beam brake. So we just keep oscillating this back and forth, and it basically can hold a ball here indefinitely. And then we can spin the turret around once it's free and load the ball in here with the flipper arms. And we have a beam brake right over here. So once the ball is past this beam brake, we know that it's loaded into the catapult, sure. and then we're ready to fire. So when we fire, we have this for controlling our catapult, we use this algorithm called model predictive control, where basically our goal is that after a fifth of a second, we can tell the catapult, I want you to shoot at this angle and this speed. And the catapult will always do that. So at each iteration, every five milliseconds, the catapult's code is going to check, solve, and figure out what voltage do I need to give right now so that at that time, in five, a fifth of a second, I'm at that goal speed and position. The, the throw of the catapult, though, is always the same. Like, it's always starting at the same spot and doing the full length of the arm. It's not like you cut back on, on how much uh, it's doing that. It's just how much power is going through it? No, so we actually release at different angles. Oh, okay, on. gotcha. So, yeah, depending on the distance, we'll change the, the angle and velocity with using an interpolation between uh, different ones. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. Yeah, so um, we use a solver called OSQP to figure out the, what the optimal voltage is each iteration. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, let's keep talking more. Uh, we're going to the PCBs on here too, so I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. And then we're going to uh, demonstrate that uh, cargo journey coming through your robot too. Yeah, so these PCBs here, the blindingly green lights, as we like to call them in the pit, um, their jobs are to light up the re retroreflective tape on the goal, similar to how a limelight has those six LEDs. Yeah. The primary reason that we went with the custom solution this year is because we just like to have complete control over what's in our, in our entire stack. And I guess one fact that I really like about this is that if you think this is bright, this is only at 70% bright. <laughs> sure, all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, last thing I'm just asking this, uh, uh, going this route, like versus like just doing all lot, I mean, is that from a cost savings, is it a challenge of doing it? Like what motivates to go this route instead of just doing limelights on your bot? So if we use limelights, then we wouldn't actually have as, like we wouldn't be able to deploy our own software on those limelights. Got it, okay. And it also allows us to know exactly the internals and thus work around those problems or implement our own solutions. Like for example, only most of these are used for localization, telling us basically telling us where we are in the field. And only one of them, or very, like this one right here, or well actually this one here, is the one that faces the goal while shooting, which is generally considered the most valuable. Makes sense. Let's uh, let's now demonstrate the cargo path on this, and then we're going to go into your climber and wrap up your robots. So love to see uh, if we can get some narration as of, of what's happening too as it goes through. It'd be great. Yeah. So we'll start off by showing you what our robot will intake from the front first, and we'll intake from the back. And we're going to start off with intaking with the blue ball, which is the wrong color ball, as you can see from our bumpers, and our robot will just recognize that and spit it back out. So you'll see here, taking the blue ball, and then it spits it right back out. And then if we intake with the red ball, and you can see the turret spinning there really quickly to get the red ball into the right spot. And now we're just gonna take the red ball out. Yeah, that is our robot, and the function of the turret. Yeah, super smooth. So, so each time uh, for the, that turret moving uh, as you are intaking balls on that, like, how does it know which side the move on? It just senses something immediately and then that will, that will turn that? Yeah, so we have a beam brake inside here. Okay. And that beam brake triggered, the turret knows that the ball is in this side. Makes sense. So let's wrap up your robots. So we got your uh, climber and uh, we'll show that off. And anything if we can deploy uh, as well and talk about the climber sequence would be great too. All right, so for our climber, have a mid to high climb with our robot latching onto the mid bar at this point and we have a latching climber that way, that way once we're on the bar we're on the bar once we get through there we have our high bar climb which is actuated by a servo so that's a latch um, you'll unlatch that we'll show you that just in a moment yeah. and it's a passive climber other than this servo so that is constant force spring which pulls it up into this cool 3d printed part and that is, it will go all the way up and that's its hard stop. 
on this. You then have an angle here, which is the perfect angle for us to come and reach the high bar. So it stops it right there. And this hook will spring out due to a torsion spring up here that will flip itself out and catch the bar as soon as it clears this spacer. Something cool to point out is this gusset looks like a bunny. Um, okay. <laughs> that's just something that's another team actually noticed. And that's just holding our pulley up here together as well as our 3D printed part and our, our springs up there. Well, let's uh, deploy it up and kind of just narrate as it goes through. That'd be great as well. All right. So Millen's going to first start off with the mid bar climb. So then we'll say it's latched onto the bar. Then you can go ahead. This is the high bar climb. So once we get our high bar climb, we would have already had pulled down on this. Sure. Then we would have released it back up. So then we'll swing onto our high bar. And what's the timing currently right now for 971? Um, we definitely climb in under 15. We have a video of us going to the hangar and climbing. This is including time to line up and get on the bar. That video is 12 seconds long. Awesome. Well, so, yeah, we really appreciate you taking the time. A, really a phenomenal awesome. machine, phenomenal robot, uh, and looking great here at Championships. So uh, good luck here at World Championships. Uh, regardless, great machine, awesome overview, and really appreciate the time. Thanks a lot. Thank you. First Updates Now is supported by the Milwaukee School of Engineering. MSOE offers week-long summer camps where high school students get to preview college by living on campus, exploring engineering programs, experimenting in labs, meeting with professors, and participating in fun group activities. Are you ready to experience STEM at MSOE? Visit msoe.edu slash summer to learn more and register. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. Apply the skills you gained as a first student or mentor and help change the world at Stryker. Stryker is a top career choice for many of those in first because of their commitment to innovation and saving lives. Learn more about the incredible culture at Stryker and view their thousands of positions available around the world at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.